This video is brought to you by Ground News. In a significant geopolitical shift, Armenia's foreign minister said recently that his country was considering applying to join the European Union, with his comments following local media reports that Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan wants to start the application process by late 2024. Not long after this, the European Parliament adopted a motion seemingly encouraging Armenia to do so, saying EU candidacy could set the stage for a transformative phase in EU-Armenia relations. Now, since Armenia's independence from the USSR in the early 1990s, the country has effectively remained within Russia's orbit politically, militarily, economically, and so on. As such, applying to join the EU would be an important move in what is a wider attempt by Armenian authorities to shift away from Russia and reorient, at least to some degree towards the West. So in this video, we're going to explain why Armenia is looking to Europe, what it says about Russia's influence, and whether Armenia could actually become the EU's latest member state. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. First things first, we're going to address the geographic question, because when we covered this on a recent daily briefing episode, we got lots of comments like this. So here's the reality. Yes, the rules say that only European states may apply to join the EU. The term European isn't actually defined and is usually read as meaning geographically, culturally, politically, and so on. But while Armenia is in West Asia, not Europe, that doesn't actually rule it out of EU membership. Yes, Morocco's application in 1987 was rejected because it isn't a European state. But Cyprus, geographically in West Asia, has been a full EU member since 2004. Plus, Armenia's neighbour Georgia, which straddles the Europe-Asia border, has been granted EU candidate status. And Turkey, of which the vast majority is in Asia, was also granted candidate status decades ago. It's also worth pointing out that Armenia is a member of the Council of Europe and other Europe-focused institutions too. The point we're making is that whether the EU considers Armenia European is ultimately subject to a political assessment, meaning if they want Armenia to join, then the geographic question will not be a barrier. It's worth pointing out at this point that Armenia did actually make something of a false start towards closer EU ties more than a decade ago. Having joined the EU's Eastern Partnership in 2009, Armenia and the EU began negotiating an association agreement that included a deep and comprehensive free trade area. However, in 2013, the Armenian government abruptly changed course and instead joined the Russian-dominated Eurasian Economic Union, effectively sinking plans for an EU-Armenia free trade deal. In 2018, the so-called Velvet Revolution brought Nikol Pashinyan at the head of the reformist government to power in Armenia, following pro-democracy and anti-corruption protests. But in the past couple of years, relations between Armenia and Russia have deteriorated. We covered the military side of things more in detail in a recent video about Armenia and France's new defence relationship, but as an overview, Russia was traditionally Armenia's security guarantor. However, relations have deteriorated in part due to Russia's invasion of Ukraine, but mainly because of the failure of Russian peacekeepers to maintain a ceasefire between Armenia and Azerbaijan, and their failure to prevent Azerbaijan from capturing the breakaway Nagorno-Karabakh region in September 2023. Armenia's Prime Minister Pashinyan declared earlier this year that his country had effectively frozen its participation in the Russia-dominated Collective Security Treaty Organization, or CSTO. Fearing further conflict with Azerbaijan, Armenia has been looking for new security partners, and France has seemingly stepped in to fill the role, signing significant arms deals aimed at modernising the small country's military. Beyond Europe, though, Armenia has also been buying weapons and defence systems from India, suggesting the lesson learned is not to rely solely on one supplier. In other moves away from Russia, Armenia just recently joined the International Criminal Court, which has an arrest warrant out for Vladimir Putin. And last year, Pashinyan called off hosting CSTO military drills, and later held joint exercises with the United States. Armenia also recently announced the removal of Russian border guards from the capital's international airport, thanking them for their service, but saying that Armenia now has the institutional capacity to independently implement border guard services at the airport. Meanwhile, Nikol Pashinyan says his government has the political will to continue working towards a maximum deepening of Armenia's ties with the EU. 
But if Armenia truly wants to untangle itself from Russia, it still has a long way to go, and there are plenty of obstacles to EU accession. Perhaps the biggest of these is that the country still hosts multiple Russian military bases with thousands of troops, with its lease expiring in 2044. It's still also a part of the Eurasian Customs Union. Armenia's railways actually belong to Russia's state railway company. Armenia's border with Turkey and Iran is still manned by Russian guards, it's still reliant on fossil fuel imports from Russia, and the two countries have a considerable trade relationship. In fact, on this last point, despite the political tension between the two countries, the trade relationship has actually significantly increased recently, with Armenian exports to Russia growing 300% since 2021, thanks to re-exports of Western manufactured goods that Russia struggled to acquire directly. Of course, these are all things that could be changed over time. For example, the government says it's actively trying to diversify its trade relationships. So these current dynamics do not necessarily rule out future EU accession. However, they do pose a risk should Armenia decide to press ahead with seeking EU membership, as Russia has plenty of tools at its disposal if it wants to disrupt things. Separately from Russia though, there are other reasons why EU accession could prove difficult for Armenia. Firstly, this takes us back to the geographic question. It's easy to imagine that there would be some EU member states uncomfortable with admitting Armenia and therefore creating a direct border between the EU and Iran. But more importantly to accession are all the many prerequisites set out by the EU for potential members. To be fair, under Pashinyan's reformist government, Armenia has made pretty good progress in carrying out the kind of governance and rule of law reforms that the EU requires, and is arguably doing better at this than Georgia, an actual EU candidate. But while this progress has been welcomed by the EU, there are still many areas where, in the EU's eyes, Armenia would be deemed lacking. Things like press freedom, certain human rights and equality issues, and more. There's actually a whole European Commission report on this from just last month, if you're interested. Ultimately though, even if Armenia takes a long time to become an EU member state, or doesn't end up becoming one at all, just applying for EU membership would represent a significant geopolitical shift. And much to Vladimir Putin's frustration, Armenia is far from the first country to pull away from Russia's orbit. Now, these kinds of shifting geopolitical alliances can sometimes be hard to track and follow. And lucky for you, our sponsor Ground News is your ultimate tool for easily navigating news coverage. Their app and website creates really comprehensive story overviews on any topic, so you can easily compare how news is covered across the world and political spectrum. For every article reporting on a story, you'll see the source's political bias, how factual they are, and even who owns them. For example, let's take a look at today's story about Armenia wanting to join the EU. Not only can I see that there were 39 sources reporting the story, but I can also quickly identify which sources have a political bias, according to ratings from independent news monitoring organisations. I can also see how the story is being reported across the political spectrum. 42% of the news sources lean left, while 32% lean right. And the cool thing is, I can also see how different headlines shape the story, reading the articles directly within the app with just a tap. I also especially like their blind spot feed, which shows you stories that are underreported by either side of the political spectrum. For example, if you lean right, you might have missed this story about the US House of Representatives voting on a TikTok ban. It's unlike any other news app you've come across, so go to ground.news forward slash TLDR or click the link down in the description to get 40% off unlimited access to their Vantage plan. That's only $5 a month to help an independent news platform working to make the media landscape more transparent.